This is the um, distributor cap of my 1934 MGPA. I've decided to fit an electronic ignition to it. Um, the one I've gone for is from AccuSpark. Um, basically for reliability on long journeys basically. Um, everything can be swapped over and put back again so it's not as if we're permanently changing anything. So first of all you can see the low tension cable here going to the one side of the distributor and the distributor cap with its um, five um, leads coming from it. So first of all I'm just simply going to unclip that one. I've unclipped the one at the back anyway just for ease of video. So I'll take that off and there we have the current module with the rotor on and by this it looks like the rotor arm has been replaced at some time um, which is fine so we just need to pull that off which is quite simple put that to one side and then all I need to do is remove this now because this has a baker like base the replacement which is uh, number 38 from the AccuSpark range comes with a plate the good thing about this is it means I haven't got to undo the points um, which means I could disturb the um, uh, point gap so it's quite straightforward I've removed the one screw from here I just need to undo the one from here using the right screwdriver for the right screw and if I undo that I should now be able to simply lift off the old Bakelite point base and as you can see it's all complete which is great so no problem there. So I'll put that to one side. The replacement that comes from AccuSpark, this is the actual unit, pretty simple really. Um, it comes attached to the base so there's no siliconing of the uh, sensor to the base plate. Two output wires which is typical of the um, electronic version because you have the negative from the coil and a positive which has to go to a positive feed. Now that will simply, and I say simply, it's always a famous word isn't it, so I now simply just place that over the top of the um, distributor. I haven't had to remove the distributor which is great uh, and just line that up so it just sits on there. So all I need to do now is put the screws back in there and I'll come back to you in a second. So there we are, that's the uh, rotor screwed in place with the two screws. Um, I don't know about anybody else but the screws are a bit um, chewed up on the heads a little bit, the old ones I took out, so I like to put new ones in, so I've put new cheese head screws in, and uh, for those who want to know, they are actually 4BA. Um, I've had, they are a bit shorter than the ones that uh, went in the original base plate, but those are 4BA. Anyway, in the kit of this um, new electronic ignition, you get the sensor ring, which is, uh, it has a magnet in there somewhere or other, and it triggers the sensor um, in the module there. So I slot that over the distributor over the cam I should, should say and it is a nice tight fit which is what it should be just get it on in the right place there we are it's so nice and snug as it says in the instructions and I'm just making sure that there is a slight gap between the center here and there and you can't see it that clear in the video but it is around about a mil mil and a half so we're cooking on gas there um, you'll notice there are two wires that come out the new module a red and a black the black one is goes to the negative side of the coil and the positive one's got to go to a positive feed and the instructions say positive side to the um, uh, on the coil or a positive feed uh, so that will be the next step so the next video hopefully will be when I try and test the car and get it running after I've wired these wires in the rotor by the way simply just goes back over the top and then we're ready to pop the distributor cap on the top which um, should be pretty straightforward all the cable um, as cabling has all been done and tied up to the existing loom and the distributor cap is now on so uh, we shall now have a look at doing the timing in a minute. I'm just going to move over to the coil and the wiring and things that you should be aware of which does clearly say in the instructions from AccuSpark but it's just a reminder here in this video. So here is the Lucas uh, coil. Now the observant amongst you will notice that on the top cable there's a bit of red round or red sleeving um, which would lead one to believe that that is the positive. In fact, that was going to the positive marking on the coil, which as you could probably just about see on the Bakelite case is at the bottom. I've actually rotated the coil round, basically because the existing leads below wouldn't reach to the top, 
So I made that out there, wouldn't reach the top. So um, I rotated the coil around to the positive is at the bottom and that actually is the positive feed. I reckon the reason for this in the past has simply been because it was positive earth at one point and now it's been wired negative. And as you may or may not know, it doesn't matter which way around they actually go on the coil to make a pair of points work. But it's quite crucial when you've got electronic ignition that you get the positive feed from the positive. So the orange cable you see coming off there is now the positive feed and when you turn the ignition on that is where the positive of the battery is fed to on that terminal there mark plus and also to the orange cable which goes to the electronic ignition the top is negative and that does actually go down to the what was the negative um, low tension side of the points um, so it's best as it's in the instructions to observe that because if you put that the wrong way around then that's one expensive ignition module down the drain so anyway there we are onto the see if it starts and the timing so here we go this is the first uh, test ignition on round to here luckily being a TA we've got the um, foot starter button which is there which I can do by hand um, and all the carburetor controls are here so we can do certain things so fingers crossed here we go this is the first turn over the electronic ignition <laughs> So that's all okay there. So you can see the uh, bell housing the foot on it like removed. So I'm now going to check the timing. The scroll button. Okay, so I'm holding the timing light with one hand and the camera with the other, but anyway, here we are, here's the timing light. Uh, there's a red mark on the flywheel. This has to line up with the central part of the top of the bell housing where the screw hole basically there was a hole and that is exactly now as it was um, before I started so everything's ticking over fine. It's actually marked ignition on the actual um, flywheel so there we are all done. So one MGTA electronic ignition ticking over 1000 rpm 1500, 2000, that's fine. Ignition warning lights off, which is good, plenty of oil pressure. So, everything's fine. I hope you enjoyed the video and found that useful.